Hey guys, today I want to show you this um, very cool uh, little program that's called MIDI Translator. I've got MIDI Translator Pro. If you're on Windows, you can get a free version for Windows. Mac, unfortunately, doesn't have that. Um, and what this does is that, um, well, really what it says, it can translate MIDI to basically whatever you want, but I use it mainly to um, learn keystrokes. And I've got something set up right now, but all is deactivated and I'm going to start over. And why I want to do this is because I want to control my Ableton Live set. And if we're in Ableton, we have a few very handy um, keystrokes that we can use, like the, uh, this one to change the uh, browser. This is uh, Shift Tab, sorry, to change the view. And we have the Normal Tab to go to Arrangement. And we have the arrow keys to navigate. And we have the enter key to uh, launch a clip. So um, let's say I want to use all those and I want to assign them to knobs on my MIDI controller. I can go into MIDI Translator Pro and I can um, define a new action. And then this new action here um, turns up and I call this one return because it's going to be my return key. And to uh, show you the signal flow a little bit first, maybe, um, on the left side here, we have our physical keyboards or projects or presets. And we can have multiple presets listening to one keyboard. Um, we can also switch with these actions. We can uh, switch the presets on the left. So you can use a lot of different uh, presets, with, which has some advantages, um, which I will not go into right now. But um, this. These are your global presets, and then here are the triggers or the translators um, inside the preset. And here you can uh, specify a name, you can choose that yourself. And then we have the incoming trigger here, um, which I haven't learned yet. And then we have the outgoing action. So what is it going to do? So this is the translation part, and then we have some additional options. So I've selected this one, I've called it return. It's set to active, we can see it here as well. And I want to learn a MIDI message. I can also do other stuff, but now I want to learn a MIDI message. And I'll um, put my cursor in that box and I'll say capture MIDI. And then I press a key and I press a pad right now. So this is going to give me a lot of uh, values. For example, it's sending aftertouch, um, it's sending velocity, it's sending a note. So which one to choose? Well, that depends on what you want to do. For me, I don't want to use the aftertouch because I just want to learn the return key, which is normally on your keyboard. It's a quick press on the return key, and then then you're there. So I don't I don't want to be able to hold the enter key, for example. I, I would never want that. So um, so all these A messages they they don't matter to us because they're all aftertouch, as you can see up here. So then there are basically two options left. We have the note off all the way at the end. Um, which is a message that it sends when you return the key, or sorry, when you release the key. Um, so this is already giving you a great insight in how MIDI, MIDI knobs work. It's not always just one value, it's a lot of values, and it has a different action for a note off and a note on. And for me, of course, I want the note on, and that has to be all the way at the beginning. So there you can see that I hit the pad, which is on channel 10, which is a D sharp. Two, um, which is the same as uh, 39 it has a velocity of 6 and since I don't want the action to trigger only when I use a velocity of 6 I'm going to use a variable because I want to be able to trigger the return key no matter how hard or soft I hit the key so instead of 06 I'm going to choose EP which is a variable and now it basically says listen to all velocity between um, well between 0 and 127 so now it's listening to all of that um, then we have our rules and in the rules um, this is more of an advanced section I didn't use them a lot but what you can do here is you can exclude stuff so you can say for example um, if this happens then do that so for example um, if I hit the pad at um, 28 uh, with the velocity of 28 then do an additional action but for us now we're just going to use the outgoing action and we choose here and we want a K 
keystroke and then we want the return key so I'm gonna hit the return key on my keyboard and now it has learned it so now I save the preset and we can check if it worked and you can see there that it works because I'm hitting the pad and it's um, clicking the stop button or I can play a clip sorry like that I can also use it on the right side here so it's just a normal enter key okay that's cool that one works um, what if we wanted to learn a um, an arrow key to navigate in there well there are two ways there's an easy way and there's a more complicated way the easy way would be to call this left arrow and that's all right then we say capture media again and we hit a pad and we choose the note on message and remember to give it all velocities and then we skip the rules and go to the outgoing sections and say keystroke and we say left oh messed up there clear left we have to click something else first and now when we go into Ableton and we hit that pad we can see that it does indeed go to the left but um, the problem is that if I want to go more than one to the left I have to press the key again but with the arrow keys on my keyboard I can just hold it down and it will go a lot faster like that so if I want to be able to do that I have to go into my media translator again and um, choose a little bit of a different route now instead of press sequence I'm gonna say press key down that's gonna be my left key and then I say enable key repeat so when I press it down repeat that action of pressing down every 500 milliseconds okay repeat active and then I'm gonna choose a new action and this one it's going to be just for the left arrow up. So when I release the key. Okay. And I'm going to learn the same pad. Oh, let's see what's going on here. First, I'll stop my meeting. This is going to be left arrow. You can see the button there at the top. It's very handy stops all MIDI um, and then I'm gonna choose left arrow up capture MIDI choose my pad choose the first one uh, sorry no we choose the last one of course because we want the note off and then we go to the outgoing actions and we say keystroke up oh left arrow and this one is important because otherwise it will always keep repeating that left key because it doesn't know when you have released the key. So now we have um, two translators for the left key. The first one is pressing it down and repeating it. And the second one is listening to my note off message on my keyboard, on my uh, MIDI controller. So when I release that, it will stop the action. So let's save this and let's see if that worked. We enable the MIDI again, go into Ableton, and it does work. So now I can hold my pad, like I'm doing now, and it will scroll all the way to there. Very handy. Um, so that is how MIDI Translator works. If you want to get into the rules, um, let me know. I, kn I don't know a lot about that yet, but um, I know some stuff, it's pretty cool. And um, if you have any other questions, let me know. Thanks and um, have fun with this stuff and I'll see you next week.